Good evening, Avenue community. It is April 6th, um, day one of our Easter experience together, uh, going through on uh, Right Now Media. So I hope that you've been able to uh, watch session one, uh, really all about purpose. And man, I'm excited. Uh, my family and I, we just got done watching it together. And Man, I really, I really love this so far. I know it's just fun. Um, so it's, it's good to see you guys jumping on board. If you guys haven't watched the uh, Experiencing Easter session one yet, you know, you can definitely watch it after this. If you don't have your Right Now Media <clears throat> login account in the comments from Saturday night's post on the Avenue Community page, um, there's a link to it. So you could go on there, click that link, and set up your own account, and you can watch that. And we're going to be doing that again for for all this week. Up today. Um, there's six sessions, and uh, I'm really excited about going through this together. Hey, I want to encourage you, man. Maybe uh, maybe in the comments, just post a little nugget of truth or a little nugget that um, you got from that uh, session one today. I know there's a lot in there, and I'm going to share some of what God spoke to my heart about, but I would love to see in the comments maybe what, what God just spoke to you about in that, uh, that session one tonight. So, um, man, let me just read a verse uh, from Luke chapter 14, and then I want to get into, uh, I guess, what uh, what Lord put on my heart uh, regarding what we watched today. So, Luke chapter 14 Verse 8 says this, When you're invited to a wedding feast, don't sit in the seat of honor. What if someone who is more distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, Give this person your seat. Then you'll be embarrassed, and you'll have to take whatever seat is left at the foot of the table. Instead, take the lowest place at the foot of the table. Then when your host sees you, he will come and say, Friend, we have a better place for you. Then you'll be honored in front of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And, you know, I, I really was struck. Um, guys can see me. Okay, good. I'm back. Um, so the thing that really struck me, and like Kyle Eidelman said, we don't really know what the dynamics were at that Last Supper, but it's very likely that you know, the disciples were doing what the disciples had done on previous occasions and was try to arrange themselves in order of importance, as, as trivial and as childish as that might seem. The truth is, that's the world we live in. That's the world we still live in. It was true in Jesus' day, and it's true for us that it's natural for us to just kind of put ourselves or, or try to put other people into the pecking order, where we rank or where we see ourselves or where we see others. And that's a real problem. That's a real problem for a Jesus follower because that's not the way of Jesus at all. Um, Jesus said in the story we just read in Luke 14, you know, that those who exalt themselves will be humbled, will be put down. If you, if you put yourself up, you will be put down. But if you humble yourself, if you, if you lower yourself and elevate others, then it says that God will exalt you. God will lift you up. And that's all throughout scripture. And we see that illustrated so well in what we watch tonight. And I just love the, the video element of being able to be like a, 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 a fly on the wall uh, at that last supper and to be able to just see what Jesus did and to see what um, what was going on. I think the, the, the statement or the phrase that stuck with me the most or just caught my attention was Kyle Eidelman said, you know, at that last supper, at some point the time for sermons is over and Jesus picked up the bowl of water and the towel. And that really spoke to my heart and really pointed out the fact that, you know, it's good to share 
truths. It's good to, you know, give encouraging words or sometimes even convicting words to other people. But ultimately, you know, those all have a time and a place. And at some point, the time for words ends and the time for action begins. And Jesus illustrated that so well uh, at that Last Supper when he just picked up that towel and he took the lowest position of all and began foot washing. And so I think the, the thing that I really wanted to challenge us with this week as we start on this Monday and we think about Passion Week and we think about, man, you know, there, there are other people that are, you know, Easter is still that time of the year that is the greatest chance for people to maybe be spiritually open to, you know, not attending a church service because those aren't happening this week, but maybe, you know, watching online with you, maybe joining your watch party. And so, um, so as, as we think about how to really live as followers of Jesus this week and think about what would it mean to take up my bowl of water, my towel, and to go and serve someone else and to really put others' needs first. Um, another, another statement that just stuck with me and, and, and it's, this is a, it's not a quote, I'd have to watch it back to get it exactly right. But, um, he talks about how when we live our lives, putting at the, putting at the number one spot, our needs and our desires so that we'll be happy, we typically don't get happy. We, we don't hit the mark. And in fact, I would say that in, in a lot of cases for us, when we, when we may be struggling with just like, I'm just not happy. I don't feel, you know, I don't feel happy. Um, where are we in our thought process? Are we at the center? Are my needs and my thoughts and my desires and my expectations for other people to do for me? Is that what I'm focused on? Because if so, then there's a really high chance that you are finding yourself unhappy right now. But if you put yourself like Jesus did in the place to put others' happiness and others' needs and others' wants and desires above our own, we actually discover that we feel happier. We actually discover that, like Kyle said, this is the life that we've always wanted. And it's such a revolutionary concept that, you know, just even saying that out loud, it really does. It's, it, it goes 100% the opposite direction than the standard culture that we live in. And so I want to encourage you with that. I want to challenge you that, man, what a great opportunity we have to, to step out in faith. Yes, there's anxiety, there's fear all around us and, and sometimes in us, but the truth is, is that we serve a God, man, that is, that is so much bigger than any problem that we're facing now, that is in control, and that is each one of us, and that is us to, to live a life like he did. And so, I want to that, and uh, guys, thank you. I know a number of you guys jumped on with um, some of the comments that you had put on there. Man, that's, that's awesome. So, Thank you guys for that. Uh, I want you to encourage you to maybe, you know, drop your comments on there, comment on other people's comments, and just kind of encourage one another as we get together. As we wrap up with a word of prayer, I just want to um, ask for you guys to pray.
ultimately love you chiefly. So God, we love you.